Peace and love, fam. Hope everything is good. Hope you're doing all right. Um, and if you aren't, I pray for better days. Um, Because some of us may be going through it, right? So this is, um, this is like a, I wouldn't want to say a part two, but it's kind of like a continuation, if you will, on my last video on prioritizing self-care. But this one is very important, right? Um, this is talking, this is, I'm ta I'm referring to prayer and fasting, right? So as far as our physical health is concerned, right? There are things that are out of our control. There are things that we cannot control that it's out of our power. That's we where we let God intercede and we give in, in, into prayer. And this goes to me too, because quite honestly, I need to step my prayer game up. I really do. Um, so I'm not even gonna, you know, I'm, I'm going to admit that I need to step my prayer game up. Right. And we're and with the prayer. There's also fasting. Right. So as far as the physical health is concerned. Intermittent fasting. Is a weapon against so many diseases and not just not just in, in physical ailments. Right. I'm not saying that it's a cure for all. It's going to cure anything and everything, although it just might. Right. But but you need to know what you're doing. You definitely need to engage in prayer while doing it. And you need to figure out how long are you able to to fast for. Right. And this doesn't mean no food, no water, no. F yeah, you go without food, but you can you hide you stay hydrated. Right. High quality water. Right. High quality teas, preferably make your own with high quality water. Um, and you keep your body hydrated and it'll help, it'll help you cleanse even, even, even more. Right. Um, so you, you have to figure if you've never fasted before, you got to figure that out. Um, don't go into extremes and jump on three day fast, seven day fast, no food, no water. And you haven't even done it for six hours, eight hours, 12 hours. Right. But you figure out. But see, I'm not even advocating that. I'm advocating intermittent fasting. All right. Um, I'm ad advocating intermittent fasting first. Those those other uh, 24 hour fasts or 36 or 72 or, you know, multiple day fasts that are more extreme. That's for the ones that have built themselves up to that level. And that is for a much more deeper spiritual cleansing. But I'm not talking about that. I'm I'm first focusing on the intermittent fasting where you eat during a, a, a certain time period of the day. I don't know. From 12 to 4, from 12 p.m. to 6, you know, a four to six hour window. Some people give themselves an eight hour window. And they'll fast for, you know, the other uh, 16, right? Which this includes your sleep, right? When you're sleeping, you're not, you're technically entering a fast. Technically, you're supposed to go to bed actually with no food in your stomach. That's why you're supposed to have your last meal hours, like three hours before bedtime, more or less. Um, but prayer and fasting, look, these are these are tools. These are not just physical tools. These are spiritual tools, right, to enhance our well-being, to enhance our mental health, our spiritual health, to give us a boost. These are spiritual cleansing mechanisms, right? Spiritual cleansing mechanisms, Um like changing the oil in your car, right? So we gotta we gotta give our digestive system a break sometimes. Um, 
because the liver does thousands of chemical functions every single day, right? And and constantly bombarding ourselves with food, constantly feeding, um, especially overeating. And overeating, overeating doesn't just mean eating until your belly feels like it's going to blow like a balloon. Overeating could be consuming lots of empty calories, even if your stomach doesn't get filled, right? Um, Because you're over-consuming lots of processed carbs and probably sugar or excess amounts of salt or or saturated fats, right? So it's, it's not just, you know, these empty calories. Now, I know there's people that they need to eat periodically. You know, they, they, they're on a, on a time clock. Like, they need to eat every so often because of certain health conditions. These people are kind of exempt from what I'm talking about. Um, if you, look, let me tell you this. If you have a certain health condition, right? And this goes for my last video too, because I recommended ashwagandha. If you have a certain health condition, right? And, or you are on medications, you need to do your homework and consult with your doctor as to whether any any particular regimen, such as fasting or intermittent fasting, or a particular herbal supplement, um, is safe for your for you to consume, especially if you're on medications, because certain medications, certain herbal supplements will interfere with certain medications, right? So like, like if you have hyperthyroid or hypothyroid issues and you're taking medications for your thyroid, the adaptogens will interfere with that. So you need to be careful with this. Don't just, oh, because it's all natural. No, no. You have a medical condition. You are on medications. You need to do your homework and consult with your trusted physician, right? Um, so that's that disclaimer there. And that's facts because things, you know, you mess around and you don't know what you're doing. Things can get a little scary. But look, I'm not trying to make this long-winded. I'm just saying prayer, right? Prayer is like a direct connection to the divine. It's like it's like your direct link. You know, there are other ways too, but it, it, it's a very it's a very conscious connection when you pray. And then fasting, right? And fasting is not just, you know, abstaining from certain food and drink. Fasting could be abstaining from social media, abstaining from TV, abstaining from, you know, uh, uh, from the cell phone, right? Abstaining from the video games, abstaining. Fasting, you could fast from certain activities. So it's not just about food, right? So you give, you, you slow down with the food, right? With the intermittent fasting and you only eat during that that four, six hour window, right? So that the rest of the day and even at night when you go to bed, your liver has a chance to repair itself. And, you know, your body has a chance to repair itself because really your body en enters the, the, the repair phase, right? In your sleep, when you are in deep sleep. But in order for that to happen... You have to be in the fasting state. That's why you can't be going to bed, consuming massive amounts of things that overwork your liver and push your liver and kicking your metabolism, right? But when you fast from like, let's say you fast from social media, you're detoxing your mind from being constantly bombarded with social media, right? Um, and so on and so forth. You know, you decide, you decide, right? what you need to give yourself a break from because all of these things contribute to the body being in dis-ease, right? The body being out of balance. And there's all these little stressors, right? These little things that cause stress in our lives, whether we even, we're even conscious of it or not. So many of us, we're living with all kinds of aches and pains and stress that it has become... And we live, we've been living with it for so long that it has become normal or that we become desensitized to our own suffering and pain, right? And we just carry on 
right? But it's doing is 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 wrecking our bodies. And then when we fast from certain activities, situations, people, right, substances, whatever it may be, and are and we're able to, you know alleviate that stress and we're like oh man this is what it feels like to be alive this is what it feels like to feel good right i don't need the drugs to feel good i don't need this is to feel good right um i don't need the band-aids to feel good metaphorically speaking right it's a beautiful thing to cleanse yourself to give your body opportunity to to to, it, it's a beautiful thing to give your body the opportunity to do to work the miracles that it knows how to work and its functions the body the you know what I'm saying the body the body has all these mechanisms that allows it to function how it's supposed to function so long as we're not too um so long as we're not too polluted our vessels are not too polluted with massive amounts of toxins crap and stress. So I just wanted to, you know, put that out there. Prayer and fasting, right? I need to step my prayer game up and the fasting. Well, oh, here's the other thing with, with the fasting. When you fast, don't be telling people that you're fasting. Don't be explaining to them. Don't don't bother, right? Because this the fasting is a spiritual, it's not just a physical thing. It's a very, very spiritual process and a very, very spiritual journey. And it's a personal one, right? So unless said individual is walking that path with you, you keep that to yourself, you know? And it may be a little difficult at times because social gatherings is all about consumption, whether it be alcohol, food, or both, or whatever, right? Um, It could be shit. It could be consuming the TV, sports, right? But... When you're fasting, you keep that to yourself, right? And then if you are in a, if you are in a, my recommendation, right? Again, you can do whatever you want to do. I suggest if you happen to be in a setting, in an environment where you're being offered something, but you're sticking to your regiment because you are on your schedule, right? Be discreet about it. You know, keep it short, sweet, and simple. Um, just say no. You don't. You don't have to give explanations, cause you don't want to. No, I'm good right now. Maybe later, right? People are gonna talk about you anyway. You start telling people and explaining to them that you're doing this, this, and this. You're just wasting your time for the most part. You know, again, unless you trust said individuals. But you know, just just be careful with that. And also because, like I said, it's a it's a personal journey. And, and, and you're doing it for, for yourself. You're not doing it to impress nobody. You're not doing it for accolades. You're not doing it because you need validation and approval. Because these people are not going to validate and what you're doing and they're not going to approve of it neither. Most people are going to think you're crazy. Or they're going to look at you sideways or, you know, don't explain nothing to nobody. You're fasting. That's a personal journey. You keep that to yourself. Again, that's just my suggestion. That's just my two cents. My recommendation. You can do what you want to do. But um, um, the journey is your own to walk. Right? So prayer. Again, I know I'm, I'm regurgitating, but prayer and fasting. Powerful, powerful, powerful tools that will assist us on our journey. And it's not something that happens overnight. It's a process. And that is where we keep the faith. Right? Um, and we do our part to do everything that we can on our part, right? Everything that we can. If we fall short, we forgive ourselves for making a mistake. We're human. We're, we're in this flesh. We're in this, we're going to make mistakes. You forgive yourself for the mistake and you learn and you pick yourself up and you keep going. And those battles that are too hard for you, you put those prayers up. You let the most high take care of that. Peace and love.